Well, Brother Fannin, can, can my wife be a pastor one day? What's wrong? How come my wife can't just be a pastor? I mean, they do it on TV. They got women pastors all the time. But listen, the Bible says something a little bit different. Straight out of the gate, there's two things that would disqualify any woman from being a pastor. God has it here for a reason. Any woman pastor that you see, number one, she's in rebellion. Okay. Number two, I would challenge you to show me one that is actually saved, that preaches the right gospel. I've yet to find one. Okay. And look, he says, if a man desire the office, sorry, Joyce Meyer, you're eliminated, right? It says, the husband of one wife. Sorry, Joyce Meyer, I know you look like a dyke, you look like a dude, but it doesn't count. You have to be a man according to the Bible. And you think about some of the famous women preachers, Paula White, right, from Florida. She is an adulterer. She is an adulterer. She is wicked as hell. She is causing all sorts of havoc in the church, right, which... She's not part of God's church. She's not a Christian. What she teaches is strange doctrine. But the world looks at her and says, well, she's a pastor. Women can do anything. Can't they be a pastor? No. Not according to the Bible. Not according to God's Word. There's a reason for it. Oh, what about Victoria Osteen? Co-pastor. Right? She's the co-pastor over there. Yeah. Joel, sit down. It's my turn to talk. Right? Wicked anti-God, anti-Bible. There's so many verses that teach us why. And listen, around here we are not opposed to women. We love women. There's a proper role for people. And women do not belong behind the pulpit as a pastor over a church. And the world wants to say, well, that's a hateful thing to say. Oh, I'm sorry, that's what God said. In fact, no, no, I'm not sorry. It is what God said. Whether you like it or not, it is a fact. And it's not, it's not said to be ugly. It's said for a reason to keep things in order. Joyce Meyer, what an ugly dude, right? And you know, and today you have a bunch of these Lutheran and Methodist and Nazarenes and all these Episcopalian. I mean, they're they're literally letting homos come in and pastor or take the, the position of a bishop or an elder, and they're letting them teach and lead a flock, and it's really strange what's happening. Right? So then what happens? You let some dyke come behind the pulpit. Well, guess what? The dykes flock to it. Yeah. Well, then what do you do with the children when you got a bunch of child molesters invading these churches? But, but these churches are not upholding God's standard. God has it there for a reason. These women are daughters of the devil. Yeah. Victoria Osteen works for the devil. Yeah. Her belly is her God. Her pocketbook is what matters. That's her priority. Listen, a lot of these women preachers are actually reprobates. They are total false prophets that know the truth and hate it. And when they're confronted with the scriptures, they just sneer at it. They scoff at it. Can you imagine the day when Victoria Osteen or, 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 or Paula White or one of oh, turn to 1 Timothy chapter 3, oh, verses 1 and 2. We better start in verse 3. Right? No, they're never going to turn there. They're never going to teach it. All they're teaching is their own profitable, strange doctrine. They, they pollute the Word of God. You say, well, Jesus wouldn't do that. Jesus loves everybody. You know, Jesus commented on it. He said in, in Revelation, He said, I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication. What happens when you let a woman call herself a prophetess or a preacher and put herself up on stage? The result in the church is fornication. The result is more of God's laws being overlooked and broken when you start from the top Listen, any organization, any company that has problems at the bottom, I guarantee it stinks from the head down. That's just how it works. Look, you're in 1 Corinthians 14. Look at verse 34. Let your women keep silence in the churches. For it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience. As also saith the law. Even in the Old Testament, God had a pattern from the beginning. Adam was first formed, then Eve. Eve was given to him as a helper. All throughout the Old Testament law, it says, when a man take a wife. And it doesn't say it the opposite way. It doesn't say when a woman decides who her husband's going to be. When a woman decides to throw her husband away and get somebody else that's more of a hunk. Listen, that's wicked. That's what's happening in our world. And they've eliminated the law of, the law of God, the Word of God. And it's clear here, they also say it the law. This is in the New Testament, and it's pointing back to the Old Testament. There are marriage laws for a reason. Look at the next verse, verse 35. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. It's a shame. Listen, 
If, if you have, husband, if you have to turn to your wife and say, well, what does he mean by that? What is sanctification? Dude, you got a problem. Yeah. Listen, you better put in double time. You better figure out what the Word of God means. You better not let your wife outdo you in your Bible knowledge. You better compensate for that. Right. It's a shame to you if your wife has to teach you what these things mean. Amen. Now listen, well, what, women keeping silence, what does that mean? Hey, they're allowed to fellowship. They're allowed to sing. They're allowed to help the babies. It's not, oh, you got to, oh, you hit that door, you better shut up. No. Church is the congregation, the assembling, the preaching service. Okay? Women are not allowed to preach to everybody in the church. If we let a woman get behind this pulpit, God would not bless it. And it's not me trying to be chauvinistic or come up with my own ideas. God has instituted this from the beginning. And women, if you have a problem with it, check your heart. Do not be rebellious against God's law. Because if there's a problem there, just as with Jezebel, and you're usurping that authority, there's going to be additional problems. You're going to have problems. And listen, fellowship, sing, that's good, that's okay. Right? We know about Philip the Evangelist. He had the four daughters. They went out preaching out there, out to the world. They went to people and knocked on their door, right? They went to their friends and preached the gospel to them. Women, you're commanded to preach the gospel. But not behind this pulpit. Right. Women preaching behind the pulpit, no, not allowed. Not okay, it breaks God's law. Yeah. Look at verse 37. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Amen. What the Bible is saying, oh, you have a problem with it saying that a woman should keep silent? You have a problem with the commandment of the Lord. Yeah, right. Oh, you think you're saved, you think you're a man of God, but you want to acknowledge this? You think it's okay for your wife to boss you around or to, to lead you? Man, you got a problem. Be a man. Stand up. Take responsibility. Look, go, go back to 1 Timothy. This time go to chapter number 2. Look at verse number 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man but to be in silence. Go back to the next chapter, chapter number 3. Women, please do not usurp the authority that God has put over you. It is not right. God will not bless it. 